Aloha, everybody. I just got home from doing shopping and I thought of doing, is this recording? Yeah. I thought of doing, um, I thought of doing a, a video uh, of me unpacking stuff and talk about keto, keto diet a little bit, keto eating. <laughs> um, and I, and I'm going to call it uh, Patrick's Keto Kitchen. So, she just uh, went to Super Conti. One of the things, I mean, people, people don't, um, I'm a little embarrassed for people to see how, how chunky I've gotten. But, um, you know, being from LA, I also learned that there's value, if you are familiar with acting classes, there's um, there's value in in uh, burying yourself naked with all your insecurities, and I'll tell you later. I'll, I'll tell you later. <laughs> I'll give you an update to see if that actually is that actually works. It's supposed to um, be good for you, make you stronger before your vanity and insecurities. So, anyways, um, God, I just did a whole bunch of shopping, and I almost couldn't haul it up the hill. And I'm thinking about what I'm going to have. So we got some uh, liver, liver for Kalele and for me, for both of us. The protein liver is actually uh, very good for rebuilding, guess what, the liver. So I thought it's perhaps a better option than buying cow meat, although um, sizzly, fatty steak is kind of hard to to uh, not reward yourself with when you're doing keto. Um, so yeah, I was gonna say keto is not necessarily for dieting. It works really well for dieting because um, you get a lot of nutrition and you deprive your body of the uh, in dysfunctionalness, the dis dysfunctionality of why you get fat. So in other words, you, you, you lose weight slowly by changing your body to a, a better um, harm, hormonal uh, and digestive process. Um, so some of you might probably know that it's about depriving your, your, your system from producing too much sugar. And it's based on a lot of uh, belief that many people are, it's based on the belief that a lot of people are insulin resistant resistant and if you're insulin resistant that means that um, it's chaos in your body your body your body produces insulin and it doesn't know where to stuff it and I'm not a doctor so I'm not going to pretend to explain it really well but there's tons of videos for that as you know uh, yogurt is really good for uh, getting your and your um, your beneficial flora and bacteria but you got to watch out with yogurt because Yogurt can be either um, very high on carbohydrate on proteins and low on carbohydrates, but usually it's the opposite. It's very high on carbohydrates and low on lowish on proteins. So you, when you buy when you get yogurt, you always got to look at the label and see where it says right. Okay, right there. I don't know if this is inverted, but anyways, that is really high and you'll find sometimes milks uh soy milk i'm sorry soy milk with soy milk the same thing can happen it can be very high on carbohydrates and you don't want that but there i found a brand that is the opposite is really high on protein and high and low on carbohydrates I, i'm sorry if i mixed that up before i'm not hearing myself um and the same thing with yogurt you gotta make sure that it's very high on protein and low on carbohydrates, which is uh, the fewer of the yogurts they make. So today I'm not sure what I'm gonna cook. I'll show you guys the pictures. Strawberries and watermelon. Strawberries and watermelon are a good way to start your, your, um, your meal, you know, eating fruits that aren't very high in sugar and maybe have fiber or lots of water to fill you up and are really tasty so they trick your 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 brain you know you don't think that you're starting you're torturing yourself uh, for those of you that are wanting to keto keto eat 
for losing weight, um, what usually is recommended, the intermittent, intermittent uh, fasting, which is also healthy. You don't even have to be wanting to lose weight to do intermittent fasting because it's very healthy for your body, actually. And this is, this is why I like keto, because it, it touches on a social issue, on the fact that we have become a society, and, and videos talk a lot about this, a, a society that, has, that mass produces grain, and there's some interesting subjects, and, and so a lot of us are suffering insulin resistance, uh, and so there's some interesting subjects on, on the on, uh, eating in, on the food industry. It's like how do you how do you return to um, a society that eats more whole foods that are not highly pro there's um, this has actually been talked about for a long time. The general rule of thumb or belief is that the more process, meaning more, in, more industrialization has concentrated uh, ingredients in, 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 in synthesized or refined foods, like refined sugar or flour, the more it freaks out the body because we evolved most of our evolutionary period, which so it also goes with Gaia humanism, most of our um, evolutionary period, uh, just picking stuff and eating them. So perhaps we, we maybe went around the fields and collected baskets of grain and instead of making flour or bread, we maybe soaked them and ate them raw. And so the quantity is, uh, the, the body responds to a more proportional quantity of, of nutrition. I got chicken for Kalili and for me. <laughs> But mainly for Kalele, what I do is usually I, I cook for her and then I I'll maybe steal a little piece of, of meat. Um, I got almonds, which are really packed a punch. And also, um, it's good if you soak them in, in uh, mineral water and, and spring water and have them soften up a little bit. And the problem is that once you do that, they kind of start a process where they produce enzymes, which are really good for you. But at the same time, they start breaking, they start the process of getting old. So you either stick them in the fridge and eat them in, over the next two days, or you know, or you eat them all after you soak up a batch of them. Um, what else I got for cooking? I think I'm going to make sauteed liver. I'm not sure yet. Um, I was just going to cut. So I got some mushrooms. And... Let's see, I've got tons of stuff. Um, I actually do this all the time. And when I get, for example, these are, this is a kind of, I don't know, uh, spinach chicory, or I don't know how to translate this in English. But they have a lot of these types of vegetables in Italy, which are sort of variations. In, in Spanish, it's called acelga, and I, I think acelga is chicory in English. But, you know, the whole kale, spinach, chicory, all this stuff is really good for you, as you know. And so what I do, this is what I actually do all the time, is I grab one of these. First, I, I, I dump this in, in, the, in the basin to get all the uh, dirt uh, off. But, you know, the dirt also has vitamin B, so I don't know, that's kind of... You can rinse it if you don't want to eat any rocks or, or snails. And um, then I put it in these with water, so the the plant, I, I cut the ends so that it has a fresh cut underneath it, just like you're gardening and making cuts. And then I put it in water so that it gets another burst of, of water, you know, and it, and it irrigates the leaf. And so I figure it's closer to live food eating when it comes time to cooking. And I do the same thing with, with uh, spinach. They sell loose spinach leaves. Amazingly cheap, like 89 cents for each of these bags or something. Yeah, green leaves are really cheap. Peanuts are not like the best. The best one for keto is Brazil nuts um, and walnuts. So we got walnuts still from, from the other day. Um, oh yeah, what I was going to say is um, that for those of us who want to 
do keto uh, at first to lose weight and then to change over into a lifestyle, um, and you do intermittent fasting, one of the things that you, you the only thing you've got to deal with, because it's a great diet and that it tricks you that you're eating really rich, and when you never done it, or when you first start doing it, you get over that first hump, and then the, that first stretch after the first hump, you are amazed by how much energy uh, you have and you're not hungry because all of a sudden your body is getting nutrition in a way it never has before. But after a month or two or the second time around, like me, I totally, I, which I, I totally blew it last year, I, I lost like, I don't know, 40 pounds and then I took a, in another year, I gained it all back. And, and so um, I, I had a hard time starting again because I was so... Uh, disappointed with myself that I had the psychological and so you know this whole subject has a lot to do with psychology I'm not going to get into that and anyways so one of the ways uh, when when you pass that first stretch is um, you'll start feeling like you you get hungry at, in the in the evening naturally I mean sooner or later if you lose weight your body's going to start saying hey this is weird what are you doing to me so what I do, what happens is that when it, if you do intermittent fasting, I, for example, don't eat until this time, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I have coffee. You can have coffee, tea, as long as there's no carbs in it. No artificial sweeteners are really bad. I was doing that, and, uh, and it, would trigger, it would trigger in my brain the same response as uh, when I would eat too much sugar, and I would pass out completely drop dead in front of the computer and I couldn't control it. My head would fall back like that. Uh, and then I saw one of the programs on YouTube on Dr. Becky's program that I learned that artificial sweeteners, and she explains it. I love it when they tell you what the mechanism of the actual chemicals is, because that makes me feel, okay, they know what they're talking about precisely. And I learned that these uh, artificial sweeteners have another other chemicals and ingredients that stimulate another part of your brain into thinking that you're eating uh, producing carbs or, or, or producing sugar which you're not because you're there's zero they're very low they have virtually no carbs and no calories but uh, your brain still thinks it does and it does the whole cycle of, uh, of um, of reacting to that overproduction of sugar. And so, naturally, you know, of course that means, wow, that must be really unhealthy for my, for my body if my brain is getting tricked that way, right? Okay, so what I, I wanted to, for those guys that have that situation where you, um, you two o'clock comes around and um, you're starving, over the years I've learned, I've learned things here and there like for example fruits digest faster and then sometimes it's advisable to have your fruit and a half hour later eat your meal like your actual hard meal and so that's what I do I start cooking and entertaining myself with maybe a slice of watermelon and I squeeze some lemon juice on it and I cut it up I, I put a plate next to where I'm cooking and I start getting my nutrition and keeping myself busy with little little snacks like a little bit of of watermelon or maybe I'll I'll take a bite at some fennel um, a fennel bulb I don't know what how you call it finocchio is in, in Italian it's the uh, fennel, basically, and you buy the root. I've never seen this in, in the States much, but here they eat it a whole lot, and they bake it in the oven, and it's basically the ball root. Not, it's above the root. The, above the crown of the fennel plant is like a bulbous area of, of white, fibrous plants, and they um, taste like, li not licorice, but, you know, fennel. And... Uh, you know, and it has zero calories and lots of fiber, and so I'll cut that and eat it with lemon juice, also maybe while I'm cooking. And what else do I have to see? I have to show everything I bought. A little tray of uh, also 
uh, arrayed, um, varied, varied mushrooms, which I love because once I get my pan going, I use this this huge pan over here. Uh, boom, you know, giant pan, and I just start heating it up, and I start boom, I start throwing in um, stuff like with all with a drop of olive oil just to flavor to give it that rich olive oil taste but really i try to use uh lighter oils like coconut oil even for cooking and even butter but butter you gotta watch out because you burn it and so just for flavor but basically and i mix with the juices of the vegetable and i kind of saute it in that kind of um, thick broth and very little of it so it doesn't boil but it cooks it like it were oil anyways these are just things that I like creating on the spot and you can too uh, pepper and like at night I usually don't get hungry because you, once you start intermittent fasting after after you eat well, like I, I have my last bite at about six o'clock, sometimes seven, but I try to end around five thirty-six, and then I won't eat till the next day, two o'clock, and that's when your body, especially when you're sleeping, that's when your body says, "Oh, oh, I gotta resort to my fat to get energy." And at first, when you start keto, uh, and you're used to being, uh, you know, a capitalistic Western that eats a lot of cookies and flour and cake and pizza and pasta and rice you know and all the stuff that's full of um your your body is full is is used to um producing the hormones necessary to get energy from that stuff red pepper and um so at first it may throw it may throw your body off a little bit pears are good uh, because they high in fiber, not too much sugar, especially if they're the hard kind, not, not the, not the, not the really soft and, and juicy, I mean, nectary kind of pear. You want the crispy, like apple type, but you gotta watch out apples, for example, have a lot of carbohydrates. So you gotta learn this on your own. But one thing that just, I remembered among the many things I learned throughout the years is that for, for example, you can, uh, a banana will be um, higher in carbohydrates and sugars and but more healing isn't this interesting as it gets old and starts getting brown spots and uh, or more medicinal for whatever medicinal capacity it has and more fiber and less carbs less sugar the greener it is as long as it's edible of course so I think this probably happens with all fruits. So it's something to keep in mind when you buy fruits. Um, so we got, I, um, what's this called? Uh, oh, Jesus. Pepino in Spanish. Huh. Oh my God, I can't remember. Cucumber. Cucumber. Uh, I just learned the other day on YouTube that it's got some really good properties. Um, so I got some cucumber and I got different varieties of squash and green peppers, green pepper, and I got, um, eggplant, which is really great for, I used, I learned to like cooking with eggplant. I would just make slices before and, 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 you know, eat it and put something on it, but I never knew how to cook with it. And then I, I made little cubes and, and made a risotto. I, I cooked it together with the rice. Uh, and it comes out really good and it immediately turns into that soft texture that you want. But uh, no rice anymore. So, and I have these two bags of basmati and jasmati, but they're just sitting there. Anyways, I give, I give Galile sometimes a spoonful of rice in her food. So slowly I'll consume that. But anyways, so with this, I'm going to do something with the eggplant and tomatoes. I was scared of getting because, uh, you know, they're really high on carbs, but you know, Dr. Becky told me <laughs> that if you just eat one, you know, you're cool and you need some, some of the nutrients that give you more green peppers, limes, I got limes. 
which are always good. You want little flavory stuff to keep your to keep you busy to keep your palate busy with tasting stuff, and you get into cooking deliciously instead of thinking of like austere eating and and small portions. You know, you just get out of that mentality, and you um, which I always knew was the key to to dieting programs to get involved in the science or the methodology and learn you know read books and learn about nutrition how what seeds do what what's the differences between fish and fowl and meat and all that and, and when you start getting into it, it's like you get your hands you become busy at work with your hands in the subject and so you forget that you're a you're no longer the, the victim of this program. You're the one that's making it happen. So it changes your state of mind. It's really helpful. But it's true that you, um, you will want to think, you don't want to put yourself on, put yourself on programs that start and end. What you want is to change your eating habits. I'm certainly not the first one to say this, but for example, the idea of eliminating sugars and flour it's not hard to stop eating bread. It's just one thing that maybe seems like a big deal. And for a while, you'll like look at a muffin or a piece of bread and you think of how good whatever uh, type of bread is. But, you know, after a while, there's so much more to eat. There's just so many things that you don't care to eat when you're one of us the, in our culture, the way we eat we go immediately for that gratification of carbs and, and bread and and maybe you know sauces or what have you and we're so busy with wanting to have that that we forget how much there is to eat in the world i mean there's just so much and this is why small town small business um lifestyle small local grocers, grocers, and it's very helpful because when you go to these places and you look around, you see they have their baskets of, of different nuts, of marinated different stuff, and you go to the fish store and they have, you know, it's not like the, the uh, sort of um, commercialized situation. I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Oh, yeah. Um, so something that's really... For example, mozzarella, the same thing with yogurt and soy milk. It can be, I found this one that is super, almost all protein and very little carbs. Amazing for, and it's really rich. It tastes amazing. It's not, it doesn't taste like something that you have to restrict yourself because of some health program you're on. It's actually good. It's just, it just so happens that the way they make it is high on protein, which is interesting. It's interesting to find out what about the industry and and um, you know usually that means a little bit lower on fats i don't have anything to compare it with but i found this one that is i don't have my glasses in it. this one is six okay out of a hundred grams um 215 of calories, a little ball of it, so it's really rich, but it only has 16 grams of fat, which is okay, because ketogenic is all about getting your energy from fats, so you try to eat uh, good fats as much as possible, but it's still totally okay with eating fats that come from meat, for example. Oh, this is what the other thing I wanted to, before I end the video, I wanted to bring up which is an interesting issue but anyways um so and you have 1.3 grams of carbs that's nothing and 17 grams of protein it's unbelievable and you go and pick up another mozzarella and it's almost half and half the same amount of each and it doesn't necessarily mean it tastes better this this is this one tastes really good so anyway it's a whole different idea no, what I what I find really interesting, what I find really interesting is um, I have marinated capers and marinated olives, 
is that I'm, I'm, as you know, vegan, not, not vegan, but of, of the belief in vegan philosophy. Um, and I believe that we should stop uh, using animals, you know, for food or, and for everything. Um, and at the same time, the keto is, is making evident the fact that we evolved eating meat, we need proteins, but not just, we don't not only just need proteins, but we need to have a, a hormonal balance in our whole system, in our chemistry, that is about less carbs and more protein. And this stands to reason, because if you imagine most of our evolutionary course, let's say 90% of it, you know, until we started writing in caves, but the animal, the, the, the creature, the, the, the body that we are, fits best to and is optimally healthiest living by the greater length of its evolutionary development, which is, let's say, 95% or 98% uh, of when we consider homids, right? Um, before we started writing in caves and came up with civilization. And that period is where we can draw what actually is the healthiest, the best, the truest, not just for eating, but for society, as Gaia Humanism, what we're best and most able to handle and deal with and, and how we go about things psychologically, socially, um, you know, organizing society and so forth. But in nutrition, the same thing applies. So if you think about that period, we probably went around grabbing vegetables and we probably learned to, immediately that they cook when they get heated by the sun or they 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 get uh they started we started cooking them we realized right away that you need to cook stuff um and so most of the period we were eating all these vegetables and fruits and nuts and and grains without doing much to them without making flour yet or bread or anything uh, very probably little because we wanted to eat a big chunk of something you know a big chunk of of watermelon uh, and and a, a big bite of rabbit meat you know uh, that's probably what constituted more of our evolution and um, so f f at the same time we are what we create what our intelligence uh, just develops and aims at so if we grow intellectually because of our intelligence to understand to cherish life it is a worthy and va uh, um, goal or a worthy a worthy direction or a, um, to 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 leave animals and no longer uh, hunt them for food although our body so we can do that we can try to start heading towards a direction that's not necessary. We do that all the time. <laughs> we invented vehicles and we have legs. And so we have all sorts of problems because we sit all day long and we don't work all day like we did most of our evolutionary period. Uh, so it's okay, that's what we are. But what we try to do is say, well, we don't want to go away too much from what our evolutionary form has optimized us as so though we want to leave meat and, and it, because of a spiritual, intellectual, uh, valid understanding that we want to be kind and appreciate life and, and give, we understand that they have a conscious perception of their own existence and we don't want to torture them and, and give them fear any more than we want to be tortured or live in fear. So veganism is very sound in where it, what, it, what it wants and what it aims to. And at the same time, the reality of our chemistry is what it is. So um, it's just an interesting topic. And I think that resolving this paradigm itself is perhaps the place to work at creating something new for the future, a place where, well, you know, we can develop, we have the intelligence, obviously, we're cloning stuff left and right. We can develop proteins in the lab and and start looking at what are immediate defects and problems and, and errors and, and uh, p potential harm in doing that may be and learn to do it right, uh, to mimic the actual flesh so, uh, somehow and 
you know, and everything that is pertinent to eating the fiber that comes in the, in the tissue and the muscle that we eat and, the, you know, and every single component of the, the chemistry therein that we eat as being expected by our evolved form of life and yet somehow try to satisfy the ambition we have, the spiritual ambition of leaving uh, animals in peace and to live naturally as, as best that without our, you know, making their existence any worse than it already is in coming to this earth. So anyways, that's an interesting topic that keto makes me think a lot about because I obviously made um, priority the, the fact that I'm trying to change my chemistry and eat healthier and, uh, you know, get my proteins you know, and so what I, what I can do in my little, in my small scale is maybe say, okay, try to not eat intelligent conscious beings like cows, uh, large animals that have come, uh, maybe a society that have a lot of bonding with their offspring and go for a fish or go for, you know, a rabbit rather than go for cow meat, you know, or deer meat, go for, uh, you know, mollusks and and try to do that in 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 my in my own limited capacity but that kind of mentality perhaps is where a, a new sort of nutritional uh non-extreme not a vegan extreme but something that would be more applicable for the world could start rationalizing and thinking you know we want to head we want to be true to our chemical physiological evolved form but we also want to pursue this higher uh, uh, sense of self and, uh, of, and, and sense of appreciation and love for the freedom of life right uh, and that and all of that 